So the M2 iPad Air, the iPad Air 6, has just officially came out. So let's go and take a look at how this particular iPad Air holds up, but exactly how to use this. If you're a brand new beginner to these iPads, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use everything to do basically primarily with this particular iPad. Now, starting off with the front side of our iPad, you're going to notice a few things. For one, you may notice that there's a front-facing camera on your particular iPad. Now, Apple has changed the front-facing camera from it being on the top side from there to this wider side. So if you look closely at one of the sides of your iPad, you should see a front-facing camera. This is not a Face ID camera, it's just a front-facing camera for the most part. Now, you're going to get your 11-inch display here, which is very beautiful. We'll talk about that in a second. Technically speaking, if you're holding it the way Apple kind of probably wants you to hold it, the volume buttons should be at the top side of your particular iPad. So if you take a look at the top of our iPad, you're going to see the volume buttons right up here. You're going to see this accessory port, which is great for connecting your Apple Pencil and some other accessories. Nothing else on the other side. Technically speaking, then the left side right up here, you should be able to see your Touch ID button, aka your power button. You'll see speaker grills on the left side. And then on the right side, you'll basically see your particular charging port. So this is where you can go and insert your charging port if you want to. This is USB Type-C. So you can go and plug in the USB Type-C cable. It's the same thing as the current MacBooks and the current iPhones and Android phones. So it's the same port as all those. On the bottom side, there's nothing much else going on. On the back side, all you're getting is this Apple logo and a single facing camera on the back side, which we'll talk about in a second. These three dots down here are basically for accessories. So if you're going through and connecting a certain magic keyboard or something else along those sides, you'll be able to connect them via this particular port down here. So at high level, that's kind of the exterior of your particular iPad. There really isn't anything super complicated. You know, these iPads are fairly easy and robust to use. So at a high level, that's kind of the exterior of your iPad. I would always though recommend putting a screen protector and a case on your iPads. These iPads are very thin. I would hate for you to go and put this in your book bag and bend it. So you may want to get a pretty durable case or put a screen protector on it so you don't crack the screen either. Now you have a few ways of turning on your iPad. You can either click on the power button right here You'll hear that sound. You can either click the power button that's right up here, you're with the touch ID sensor, or you can tap onto the display to turn it on. There's no way to like turn it off, you know, by tapping here, you'll have to click the power button, but still it's good enough. Now, when you tap it on, you'll basically see a few things. One, you'll basically see your iPad, you know, the clock, the time, your wallpaper, as well as this little gesture bar at the bottom. If you ever get notifications, they will basically show up right here. If you swipe to the left side, you can get quick access to your camera. You can also swipe back up to come here. If you swipe to the left side, you'll see your quick toggles. So these are your quick toggles that just house a bunch of information for your particular iPad. You'll basically see all that stuff here too, which is actually very nice. Now, if you want to, you can hold down on your particular iPad screen to customize it. So you don't have to do this right now, but you can go and you know customize it too if you want to right now. You can go ahead and click on, you can swipe between two different modes. You can actually, you know, create new wallpapers. So if, you know, just to you know, if we were to click on it, you can see that you can add a new wallpaper and you can customize these things to a completely different level, which is actually a really, really nice touch. Now, going back here, you can also just tap in the customize button here. You can customize your lock screen, your home screen, your wallpaper, what it looks like. There's so much stuff you can customize and your widgets. I would recommend going through and just customizing this and kind of seeing how you like your particular iPad. Now, if you want to, you can just go and click done in the top right corner or cancel it. And then you'll come back into this panel now, to get access to your home screen, you can just swipe up and then it'll come right into your home screen. Now, this home screen will always stay stagnant. If you ever swipe up from whatever application you're in, it will always take you back to your home screen. Now, if you swipe to the left, you'll basically see the same quick toggles that we had before. You can just tap right here. Now, this is your home screen, so you can customize this, you know, whichever way you want to. So you can go ahead and basically swipe between different pages of different applications that you'll have. At the very end, it'll be your app library. So this, these are all the applications that you have on your particular iPad. Not necessarily all the screen, like all your apps may not always show up here, but they will always show up in your app library. Now you might notice one thing, as I'm scrolling through, you'll see that the dock stays the same. So no matter what page I'm in, this dock will stay there. I would recommend getting used to this dock and customizing this dock with your most used applications, because when you're in other applications, you can also pull up this dock all the time. Now, if you want to delete something or remove something from your particular screen, you can hold down on the particular app icon right here, and you have a few options. You can edit widgets, you can edit home screen, or you can remove widgets. Let's say I didn't like this widget right here. I can remove it. I can remove it right there. But let's say I didn't. I want to just move it around. I can go and grab this widget right here, and I can move it to a different portion of my particular display right there, and that's another option I have. And to get out of it, I can either click done in the top right corner, or I can swipe up, 
and that's another thing. Now, like I said before, if you have these apps in your dock and you want to move them around, you can go and move, like, let's say my photo is up. I can move an icon just by holding it down and moving it. I can go and move these app icons somewhere else too. I can drop it just like here if I want to. And then let's say I want to drop another icon here. Well, while they're wiggling around, I can drag an application just like this down to my dock and bring it right there. Then I can swipe up and get out of it there. Now, to open up applications is pretty basic. You just tap on the app and you'll get used to this app right here. Applications are pretty self-explanatory, like the you know App Store does the App Store stuff. Swiping up will take you back home. Now, let's say you open up an application and you want to remove it, right? Let's say you just get out of it and you want to kind of remove it from the background. Well, what you can do is you can swipe up and stop about halfway right here. You'll come into this panel. And what you can do here is you can actually swipe out of the applications. So I can go and drag this application to swipe it out of the way. And that will help clear it out of, you don't have to do this. It doesn't really necessarily clear out of memory. But it does kind of clear it out of some stuff, so that's another thing you can try doing if you ever really want to. You can also split screen multitask between applications as well. So let's say I had my app store open, and let's say I want to go and split screen multitask with another app. Well, what I can do is I can open up, you know, let's say that application and the Safari browser, and I can go and open up my dock at the very bottom, and I can go and drag and drop an application from my dock into, you know, the side of this particular application. And now I can have two different applications going on at the same exact time, which is actually pretty crazy. I can go and minimize and maximize one you know, page if I want to. I can go and get into my multitasking panel again if I want to and swipe them both out of the way or swipe one out of the way. So I can go and clear them out if that really bothers me. Now, if you look in the top left corner, you're going to have your date and time. If you look in the top right corner, you'll see your Wi-Fi signal, battery icon, some other stuff. If you actually swipe down, you'll see a page that looks familiar to your lock screen. This will be where your notifications will be and everything. But if you swipe down from the top right corner right here, you'll basically see this panel come up again. So this is your control panel, your control center. So here you can go and quickly modify a lot of things within your particular iPad. So you can modify your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, airdrop as well. If you're playing music or songs, that'll show up right there. If you want to turn on or off rotate mode, you can go and do this and click this here and that'll turn that off. You can go and turn on stage manager here. If you want to increase or decrease your brightness, this will be this toggle, the sunlight icon. And if you want to increase the sound of your particular iPad, you can do that within this particular panel here. So this is the sound right, this is the sound right here. So you can just grab it and bring it higher or lower depending on what you want to do. These quick toggles at the very bottom are customizable in your settings, which will just go in it for a second. And that's it. It's a pretty you know, cool. You can access that system wide all over your iPad. So that will give you a quick breakdown on exactly the iPad. Some few things I want to tell you, though, is that within your particular settings application, this is an app I would recommend you getting used to. You can customize a lot of things within this particular app. If you ever have any questions or you're looking for a particular toggle, you can just click on the search bar right up here, and you can go and start using your keyboard. You can type in whatever you want to. If you're searching for Bluetooth or something, you can come into the, your settings and find that here. So here is, you know, everything is pretty much self-explanatory, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all this stuff. The general mode is the big one I'd recommend you to get used to. This general mode will tell you exactly what's going on with your iPad, what type of iPad you have, and everything like that. What I would recommend you to do, though, is to go ahead and make your way over to your system update panel right here and actually update your particular iPad. That's another very big thing I'd recommend you to do. There's updates all of the time, and I'd recommend you as frequently as possible, as often as you can, to literally just go through and just update your iPad. There might be updates available by the time you buy your iPad as well. As you can see, there's one for me. So I'd recommend going through, downloading these updates. They're very, very good for your iPad. On top of that, there's just so many things. If you have an Apple Pencil, if you want to go and do multitasking you know, gestures, so many things across the board that you can edit. So I'd recommend going through here, modifying, editing all these ones that you have. And that's pretty much it. So at a high level, that's kind of how to use your iPad. There's a lot of good stuff going on for this particular tablet too. But like I said before, grab a case, throw it on here, and it'll do yourself some service. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.